What's up to all our sidekicks and henchmen out there in the Geek Nation? I am JD, owner of Johnny Destructo's Hero Complex at 4327 Main Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You can see part of it behind me. I am here to bring you new releases. This is the new release unboxing video. Oop, there's a comment. What's it say? Hello, friend JD. Hi, Max. What's up, buddy? Um, so we're going to go through the Diamond boxes, and we're going to go through the DC Lunar boxes, and I'm going to sip on my iced coffee, and we're going to have a chit-chat. You're going to let me know how you're doing. It's going to be great. Or else. All right. I'm going to go get a box. All right, so apparently the big thing that coming out that's coming out this week is Batman Fortnite, zero point number one. Not a single person asked me for these, so I ordered three of them, uh, and now I'm getting phone calls. Everyone's trying to get a hold of a Batman Fortnite crossover event, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get more in because now everyone wants one. Molly, hey, hi, Molly, how's it going? Are you ready for a movie club tonight? wherein we will discuss Dirty Dancing 2 Havana Nights. That was, it was a funny gag. It was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if we did this movie? I just watched it. It's, it's a film. Uh, all right, so Batman Fortnite Zero Point comes out this week. What else we got? It's not a very big week from DC Comics. Um, let's see. Molly says, I am very excited to discuss the film. I assume that's why you're excited. I'm laughing so much. Good. Uh, I just wished I was napping so much. Batman Ra's al Ghul, six of six by, um, Neil Adams. Classic Batman artist neil adams and he's been doing these uh mini series for the last couple of years and uh here we go batman ra's al ghul number six of six i never said it was a good movie i just said i liked it says molly i'm glad i'm curious to see what we're going to discuss about the film tonight so it ought to be interesting catwoman number 30 by ram v and Fernando Blanco. The nice cover by Joel Jones, it looks like there. What's happening here? Uh, it's raining. She's standing in the rain and she's got an umbrella and there's green things behind her. I guess I assume that that has. Oh, I see. It looks like a big question mark behind her and it is made out of greenery. So I'm assuming it's the Riddler and. Um, Poison Ivy. It's kind of neat. We'll see. We shall see. Uh, oh, there's a variant cover by Jenny Frizon. We shall very nice. And, ooh, The Flash, number 769. So, if you're a Wally West fan, The Flash, number 768, the previous issue finally has Wally West back as the Flash. Now, to be he, he quits being the Flash in the beginning of the issue. Um, and then he is zipping through time due to some sort of speed force shenanigans. So this picks up where that leaves off. And it looks like we've got the Dominators. If you guys remember the Dominators from the... 80s invasion miniseries from DC, or maybe I guess it was probably the 90s. And then this character from Future State, I believe. And she's looks like she's got a mixture of the Booster Gold costume and the um, Blue Beetle costume. So I'm kind of curious. It's got art by David LaFuente, as well as Brandon Peterson. So I'm excited about that. I'm really, I'm really stoked about the Flash now because ever since they brought back Barry Allen, I haven't given a crap. But now Wally's back, and that's my dude. And there is a variant cover, which is kind of strange. She's she's trying to get get smoochy with Wally, and he's going. Bleh. 
Who's that? Who drew that? I'm not sure I can find the indicia in time. Hmm, 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 hmm. Scrutily do. Oh, here we go. Variant cover by Z Zhao Zhu. Z I first name. X U second name. Robert Monroe Jr. Hi J D. Hi Robert Monroe. What's shaking? Uh, it was your birthday recently, wasn't it? You just turned 15. Bri Brian's on it. I don't know if you heard him in the background. 15. All right. Happy B Day yesterday or the day before, whatever that was. Time has no meaning for me anymore. All right, I'm just getting a new stack of books. Justice League. Bye. See you, Jeremy. Um, the Big Six Zero, says Robert. He turned the Big 60. That was quick, between 15 and 60. 60 what? Si 60. Is it years, though? The, oh, yeah, he's 60 seconds old. <laughs> Justice League number 60. Oh, the Big 60. The Big 60 Justice League. <laughs> Uh, by Brian Michael Bendis and David Marquez, I assume. Uh, Brian has so many liquids on my desk. I got one for free because they made it accidentally. Oh. Do you want it? What okay. is it? Yeah. What's the, what is it? It's a caramel latte. Caramel ice. latte. Iced. I like, Ooh, I could go for some more. Nice. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. All right. So, that. Justice League? Yeah, me too. Excellent. David Marquez with a nice variant cover by somebody. Um, let's see. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, yeah, I don't know who this variant cover is by, but there it is. There's a lot going on. A whole team's there. There is a lot going on. Look at that. That's a lot. Action Figure Expert says... Josie is on vacation, far away, come around and talk it over. So many things I want to say. You know I like my girls a little bit older. Those are probably lyrics. It's a real thinker. Those are, those are lyrics to a song that I don't know. I would he says, hello, 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 Missy JD. What's up? How you doing today? I'm doing great. I get that a lot, actually. Uh, anytime I'm on the phone with a company, they always go, okay, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. You got it, ma'am. You have mentioned that before, and I do not get that. Like, you have a sort of regular masculine I know, double voice. It's kind of high. I have a high voice. I mean, it's not like, I mean, I've known you in person yeah. the whole time, but no. I'm just surprised, you know? I keep wondering, yeah. should I yeah. <clears throat> Should I yeah. work on lowering my voice a little bit? Do you speak from your diaphragm? I don't know how to speak from my diaphragm. When you speak, does your throat tighten or is it kind of like lower than that? Uh, I don't know. All right. I can't, I can't feel my voice in my body. All right. So probably my throat. How do I speak from my diaphragm? Well, it's just kind of uh, relax your throat while you talk and just kind of talk with the mentality of speaking from this area right speaking here. Speaking from this area right here. See? There it goes. There it goes. Now it's slightly... But yeah. see, even when I get excited, slightly. Well, that, but that's because that's how you're used to talking. And yeah. when we get excited, we do what we're used to doing. Slightly. That's the one. Slightly. That's not it at all. That's not it. Am I not doing it? <laughs> Bye, Grace. Bye. Have a great day, Grace. See, you got it. I'm doing it. Yeah. Doing it and doing it and doing it well. Yes. Michael uh, Dorn said, I just saw that he thinks acting as Worf in Star Trek deepened his vocal cord, like it stretched out his vocal cords. Well, that's neat. it happened. And he thinks it deepened his voice because he was doing that voice. For, yeah, as his job. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But see, now I feel like me speaking lower, I feel yeah. like this sounds weird. It doesn't. It doesn't? No, it sounds great. It sounds good. <laughs> it sounds great. It's delighting. Oh, he's delighted. I'm delighted. Ah! I'm fully delighted now. Um, all right, let's see. Roboto says, my friend Alexander always said that it is okay to like very messed up movies as long as you're not hurting anyone. Absolutely. Uh, my friend Alexander loves the Human Centipede one and two, but I hate those movies. But whatever, you know. Honestly, I'm a big horror fan, Roboto, and I haven't seen any of the Human Centipede films. 
Uh, I was even gifted one of them for my birthday many years ago. I think it was Human Centipede 2, which might be a bit of the problem. Maybe they just don't like it very much. They're like, yeah, they're just like, ah. I don't ah. Think give him this, this Not, yes. <laughs> I'm going to give him the second the one. The sequel. You really won't know what's happening. Um <laughs> Molly Hebert Wilson, Sam and I realized this morning that we had not watched the movie yet, Moving Insanity, so please don't hate us for likely missing it. Noel, you you have an hour and a half of free time to watch Havana Nights, but don't. <laughs> don't do it. Noel hasn't already watched Dirty mm. Dancing Havana Nights a couple nope. of times? Nope. That's weird. Vocal Fry JD, says Noel. Fry. 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 Um, let's see. I can, <clears throat> Molly says, I can teach you how to speak from your diaphragm. There you go. That is what I do. See? Everybody's doing <laughs> Everyone it. does it. I didn't yeah. know that. Um, Roboto says, I have never seen Human Centipede 1 or 2, and I never will. He doesn't know that. She. She doesn't know that. I believe Alexander, her friend Alexander, let me know that Roboto is a she. Oh, yes. Well, they don't know She, that. she, her pronouns. Very good. Yeah. Um, also very speaking. About their own future. What? But very certain about their own future. We don't know what's going to happen. Oh, that's we'll sure. Watch it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true. You, I will never watch that movie. Um, <laughs> also speaking lower than your natural pitch long term, it's potentially bad for you. I went back up. There it is. That's my normal shit. Yeah. I think what uh, my assumption is what would be bad term, bad for you is long term. Long term mm -hmm. is like doing it in your throat and like kind of doing what you do like this. Um, you the, the, when I was being silly. Exactly. When I was doing this. Speaking from your diaphragm is uh, oh. is a very like a recommended thing to do. I honestly but, yeah. I honestly don't know my body well enough yeah. to, to say I'm speaking from my diaphragm. Well, Molly can teach you. Molly, will, te Molly will teach me yeah. or else. <laughs> or else I'll just... Not be taught. Or I'll never be taught. That'll be that'll be the end of that. Because I absolutely refuse to. Um, <laughs> Noel <laughs> says that's awful. Keep talking like a raspy lady. All right. Hey, Missy. Action figure expert keeps calling me Missy for some reason. Is that uh, your name? It's not. It's not Missy J D Elliot. Uh, Nightwing number seventy nine by Tom Taylor is very very good. I am. Look at this cover. Actually, you know what? Look at both of these covers. Do it now. You know, the, the pink one especially is really. Good. Why well, the the colors on this are fantastic, yeah. but the layout of this is fantastic. Look at that! Look at that. Ooh, that's good, right? That's yeah. good. That's you know good. What? The the one in pink kind of builds on the first one. Yes, say, and that that was really good too. Yep, and it kind of sh shades me a little to liking that. That Indicia is really cool too. The Nightwing. This? No, no, no. Sorry, the the title. Oh, the the title treatment. Yeah, that's with cool. where he's it's the W. Ooh. Right, the W is the part of the Nightwing logo. Oh, that's cool. The W is the Nightwing logo. And it's stretching through the rest of the And it's stretching the through the rest of the... That is awesome. That is awesome. That's, I didn't even know I'm about that one. I'm a sucker for that shit. Oh, and can I also say real quick, public yes. service, it, if you are doing anything that is uncomfortable or hurts with your yeah. voice or any other party body, don't listen to me. <laughs> don't can, don't keep doing that thing. Right. You know, I think one of the Looney Tunes guys was like, if you ever do a voice and it hurts, never do that voice again. Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, yeah. I used to sing in a punk band. Hmm. And um, and then on top of that, just in my car. Uh, <laughs> so um, uh, I actually had polyps on my throat because I would sing along to punk music uh, in my band and also oh, wow. in the car yeah. so much. And I would gravel my voice up so much. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Especially if I was listening to the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Uh, where he has a really gravelly voice, I would gravel up my voice while singing, mm -hmm. trying to match. And I did pretty good at it. Sure. But uh, I had to get polyps removed from my throat because I ruined them. Wow. My vocal, my vocal cords. Yeah. Don't do something that hurts. Don't sit in a way that hurts. Don't yeah, yeah. That. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I, that's if it hurts, I, don't do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Missy JD, I heard, I heard that sores in Philly were reported up is, it was wood. It, oh, okay. <laughs> I I heard that stores in Philly were boarded up. Mm. Is your store boarded up with wood? No. Yeah. Why? Why? Um, action figure expert. What don't I know? Yeah. Why are stores boarded up in Philly? Yeah. Is there something going on? There is a trial happening, but not in Philly. The trial. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where? That's not here, though. Where's that? No, it's in Detroit. 
Right. When is the trial? Where are we in the trial? I do not know. Somebody asked about it earlier today, and that's the only thing that made me think of that just now. Gotcha. And it may be people being precocious with hmm. boarding up and not precocious. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old they are. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Noel says human centipede. I'm going to do the deep voice this whole time. I'm going to see how it goes. I'm going to I'm going to actively lower my voice. Right. Human centipede is hot garbage, like a sick edge lordy film school rejects final project. See, that makes me not want to see it. Doing it in your throat, long term, yeah. Brian. Brian Lieb. That's right. <laughs> long term. Uh, my friend Roboto. No, my friend Alexander really loves the movie Mother, huh. directed by Darren Aronofsky. But I didn't like it because there was one scene that bugged me. I don't know why I watched it, but I did. I didn't know that was Aronofsky. Yeah, Darren Aronofsky. Yeah, I thought talking about film school rejects, Noel. I watched Mother. And I thought that that film was, it felt like a film school, uh -huh. like like a big budget film school senior project. Huh. Um, it was trying real hard to be deep and it was, it felt very, very top level. Oh, really? Like it was right there. Hmm. Um, ha ha ha, oh. Brian's PSA. Oh, thank you. That was serious though. Who's laughing? Yeah. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> uh, Molly says, yeah, that's real. Don't hurt yourself. Um, let's see. What's TF2? My friend Alexander played TF2 with me to cheer me up. That friend. The that friend, the sequel. Yeah. Uh, TF2. I don't know. I'm, I don't they know. played it, so it's a game. Yeah, or a prank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, man. Freaking spell check. I meant Mr. J. I know, man. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay, Mr. JD. Um, boop, 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 boop. Worried about reactions to the Derek Chauvin. Am I saying that right? Sh Sh Chauvin? Yeah, Chauvin? Chauvin? I've heard people say Chauvin and Chauvin. I don't know. His yeah. Name. Scooby Doo, where are you? When are they going to find this goddamn dog? Yeah, he's not even the focus of the mystery. I think that's like, the problem. He's literally on the cover. Yeah. I don't know why you're still looking. I mean, are they the best sleuths? That's, <laughs> that's true. That's true. They're mostly just high all the time. Uh, yeah, it's the trial of De Derek Chauvin. Chauvin. Hmm. Deliberation. Oh, they're in deliberations already. There it is. Yeah. Oh boy! I imagine that has something to do with it. Oh man! I hope they make the right decision. Yes. Uh, I don't think they will. That is. I do not uh, trust people to make the right the decisions. Yeah. Well, they've done that before. Yeah. Uh, closing statements were done two days ago. Uh, jury is deliberating right now. Um, we all said at the same time, Nolan Ben. I assume I assume that's what she did after typing that sentence. Blah, 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 blah. I like uh, that sign-off. You should make that a thing that you do all the Just time. like, hey, what's up to our sidekicks and henchmen? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, or in person. Or just, oh, just, yeah, it's just, uh, that's how I greet everyone. Superman Red and Blue, issue two. Uh, Christopher Reeve on that cover. That's awesome. That is not Christopher Reeve. That's a lot like him. Oh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. From the angle that I saw it, like from this angle, it does. But then when you showed it to me, no, not at all. It's a cool cover. There there we go. Kind of from nope, the side. Nope. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, you know what? Upside down like this. Now right? it looks like Christopher Reeve. That's how well, I'm looking at it. That does not. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, I got to tell you, I do not like the covers to this. I'm I, I'm sorry. I do not like the covers to this series. <laughs> Even though this one is drawn by Boland. Wait, didn't you like that one? Look at that. From the first Oh, one? I did. You know what? The Gary Frank one. Yeah, that was awesome. Brian Boland drew this, and I don't know what he did. Uh, this looks like the scene in Justice League where they messed with his mouth to erase his mustache. It does. Maybe that's what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh. It does kind of. And there's a third one. Is it good? No. No. Should people buy it anyway? Yes, you should buy it anyway. Excellent. Ooh, that's weird. It looks like somebody's shooting him with some flowers in yeah, his it's eyes. Real freaking What's weird. What's happening with I, this symbol? I have no idea. What is with the insistence on what is happening with right it's weird I, I mean it's cool it's maybe not it's a, a piece cool of artwork man thing it's a piece of artwork how about yeah. that yeah yeah just that symbol i would like that you know mm. for something um let's see gotta go bye no um let's we did i commented and realized y'all had no, 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 they're just having their own little thing that's cute um who is it it's no, oh, everyone's having their own little thing. Oh, oh Team Fortress 2, says Roboto. That's the game that they played to feel better. Ah. Have you ever seen the, the movie Eraserhead? 
Human Centipede 2 is more like Eraser. Oh, I have seen Eraser Head. I like that quite a bit. It's all good. We're all just smarty pants. Um, I mean, Eraser with Vanessa L. Williams. I have not. I think she was in that. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, here we go. Truth and Justice from DC Comics. Uh, this is number three, and it looks like each issue is a different standalone story. Uh, the first one featuring Vixen, the second one featuring the Superman, and this one featuring John Constantine or Constantine, depending on which TV show or movie you watch. Um, and this has a very nice variant cover by Sway Art with, it looks like, Brother Voodoo. Oh. And and Jan Constantine, cool. Jonathan. Wait, Brother Voodoo is DC. That's yeah. Who's the guy who became the Sorcerer Supreme when Doctor Strange was in a little while? Right. Shit. Yeah. Isn't that Brother Voodoo? Wait both? a minute. No, no, no. This isn't Brother. What's is that Baron? No, that's Doctor Strange's villain. Um. Now I gotta look. Who is that guy? Um. He's a big. He is John Constantine character. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was in the show even, and he was a, yeah. I cannot remember his name. I'm flipping. Flip. I'm flipping Flip. as fast as I can. You are not. You are pausing to look at each page. That's true. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking as fast as I can. Well, that's the whole point is to find information on the page. Yeah. So. Uh, what is his name? Brother Midnight. Brother Midnight. Brother Midnight. That's a cool name. There we go. But he does voodoo, so it, that also works. The Redskins are coming. The Redskins are coming. What? Um, I think he means the Red Coats. Maybe. The Red Coats are coming? Yes. Isn't that the, that's the phrase. Well, it depends on who you're talking that's, to, that's I guess. True. But uh, one of them is... Where is... One of them is offensive. What? Uh, but in what context are we talking about anybody? I'm not sure. All right. That was Action Figure Expert. He's telling us the Redskins are coming. Okay. Hmm. I think other than like batting down the hatches, maybe I should board up. Uh, it's yes. a warning call. I got you. Mm -hmm. I, get I get it. I get it. Um, Superman up in the sky by Tom Taylor. No, Tom King. Mm. See, I'm doing it again. I go up. Tom King. Tom King. Tom King. Tom King. Uh, Superman up in the sky is a mini series. It's all in this nice little trade paperback by Tom King and Andy Kubert, uh, which I keep meaning to read. Everyone tells me it's really good, and I have not done so. I think we read one. On the podcast, the Flash Superman race. Were you? Uh, did you read that? No. No, I did. There's a Flash Superman race in here. Yeah. Really? They may or may not uh, inadvertently kill a few people along there. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> As I recall. Oh, there is. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not read this issue. Oh, no, it was good. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to read this. I like Tom King for the most part. Hmm. Death Metal, no, Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Darkest Night trade paperback. Uh, so they're they're finally collecting all the Dark Knight's Death Metal stuffies. Finally. And, oh, I got some reprints of Strange Adventures number one. Tom King. Tom King! Who is uh, Philadelphian, right? I don't know. I think so. Wasn't he at uh, some other store a little while ago? Well, he or... might not be a Philadelphian. I guess he can. He just visit. He could be visiting. City city. Yeah, true. yeah. They've opened yeah. up the city borders now. That's nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> finally, Flashpoint <laughs> Omnibus. This Ooh. is the tenth anniversary Omnibus. Look at this big bad nasty boy. There it is. Ah, oh, feast your eyes. I, no. No. Why did they put that on the top? That that's just weird. I don't know why they would Those do that. Jerks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was that ten years. Nope. So more of a rhetorical question, but yeah. I appreciate your literal on this. <laughs> hey, that's your whole jam. Don't you judge me I for said it. I appreciated it. Um, <laughs> I wasn't kidding. <laughs> let's see. The phrase is the British are coming. Well, but they were British too at the time. Right. Yeah. So the British were telling each other that the British were coming? Maybe it was a sex thing. <laughs> <laughs> what? The British are coming. Maybe they maybe were they were British like they're jerks. The brutish are coming. The brutish. <laughs> Uh, Wait, who says it was the British? Molly? Molly. Well, but that is definitely what you hear a lot, for sure. The British are coming. But I think like I thought it was on, the Redcoats. The Redcoats are coming, yeah, because they were the Redcoats, and we were done in mostly. They were, uh, you know, um, like militia people wearing just the clothes that they had. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
Uh, the guy all right. who trained the oh. army, you might be interested to know, von Steuben, is a statue of Melikort Park, was released from the Prussian army because of his uh, homosexuality, probably. And it was not until him training the revolutionaries that the revolutionaries won a single battle. Huh. So he is respond. He wrote things that are still used. I mean, I don't know if he's kind of military, but uh, he wrote things that are still used in the military now. And um, the Prussians' loss was our game. In that That's case. nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, all right. So that was the DC stuff. We're all now we're going to move on to diamond distributors, and that's everybody else who's not DC, including Junji Ito's new manga, horror manga, Love Sickness. There we go. That's the way you hold things. There we go. Uh, an intoxicating beauty turns a small town into a bloody hell. Raisuki returns to the town where he once lived when rumors begin swirling about girls killing themselves after encountering a bewitchingly handsome young man. Harp, whoa, I got a phone call. Brian, 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 continue reading that. A bewitchingly handsome young man, harboring his own secret from his time spent in this town, Ryusuke attempts to capture the beautiful boy and close the case. Starting with the strikingly bloody lovesickness, this volume collects 10 stories showcasing horror master Junji Ito in peak form, including the strange Hikizori, uh, Hikizori siblings and the rib woman. Indeed. All right, looks good. Twenty-two ninety-nine U.S. dollars. So, what have we got next? The Avengers, the Earth's mightiest heroes, King in Black tie-in. Uh, it is this. We've got Blade and what was his name? Kid thing or man boy? I forget the little uh, man thing sprout. Uh, and they've got some vampires there. Looks like an issue. All right, so that's Avengers. We've got Alice in Leatherland. I'm almost positive it says Alice in Leatherland. I have no idea what this is, but oh, Ben Louise retired to the ice coast so she could quietly find a way off planet from a world on the wrong side of societal collapse. That Get sounds cool. It was more effective with my deeper voice, wasn't it? I mean, I got out, yeah. Yeah, you got, you got out, I mean, I didn't right? Waste a second. No. Um, let's see. That's oh. cool, though. Alice in Leatherland. Um, boog, boog, boog. Oh, Benzi Yeno says, mm. can I have the Superman by Tom King? I mean, I'll let you buy it. How about that? That's a good idea. Yeah. Can you have the cost? Can I have the cost of the product? Yeah. Yeah, I'm being a jerk. Uh, ben D. Bendy. Bendy. Um, Come check out one of those uh, Alice in Leatherlands, too. Oh, yeah? You have more than one. Can you put this little sticky sticky boy on the... You know. Up in the... Aren't, aren't, well, are you, you have it over there. Are you vaccinated yet? I have one. I have one, too. We're yeah. both... Together, we're vaccinated. Yeah. If we could do a firestorm thing. Yo! Yeah. Uh, it would be cool. That though. would be so cool. We have actually not tried that. We've never. How does? How do they do? They like bump fists or something. Right? I don't think they even need to. I think they can just kind of like do it. Didn't work. No. Did you? Oh wait, try from the diaphragm. Yeah. Mm. No, nope, nothing. <laughs> Firestorm. <laughs> what do you want me to stick this to? You have the the trade over there. Superman by Tom King. Yeah, you have it over there. <laughs> no, I have it. It's over there it in the does. box. Oh, it's over here. Okay. It's in the box. <laughs> Um, Brother Midnight, not to be confused with Dr. M's. Uh, let's see. Flashpoint. Oh, yeah. Flashpoint was fun. Someone yeah. give Brian a radio job or a job never waiting movie trailers. That would be great. Narrating. I bet it means narrating. I'll do either one. Um, oh, Justin says, yay, beautiful man voice, Brian. Thank you, Justin. Bye, Beta Ray, Brian. <laughs> What's uh, happening? <laughs> Brian sounds like the narrator for the Powerpuff Girls when he uses his podcast voice. Oh, thank you. Uh, in the town of Townsville. Uh, so I didn't. I didn't get it. I'll have to check out Alice in Leatherland. Boy, that text is a lot. It took me a while to figure <laughs> out. Like Alice in is easy because yeah. it's, we know that. It took me a while, and I'll tell you what: the synopsis does not 
read like something called Alice in Leatherland. It seems like a sexy book. It seems like a sexy book. It's not a sexy book? I mean, I don't know how sexy it is, but it's definitely a sci-fi book. Like, look oh. at the one on the back. She's like a sci-fi sword. Well, book. I mean, they get I mean, sexy. look at, look at that. That's sexy. It's got a little bit of sexy in there. A little bit. A little bit. You know, it's sexy in the way that, like, what's her name from that other sci-fi? What was it? Um, uh, Big Bada Boom. Uh, Lilu. Um, oh, yes. Fifth Element. Fifth Element. Yeah. Same sort of outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Good. King and Black wrapped up last week, but that's not going to stop the crossovers well, already, from coming out. Oh, you did that one? Great. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Well, you're right. It won't. Um, <laughs> all right. So that happens. And then that happens. And then we'll do this other stuff over here. Ugh. Okay, what's next? I'll tell you what it is. It's Alien Number 2 uh, by Philip Kennedy Johnson and Salvador La Roca. I was kind of hoping they would have replaced him by now, but... After the first issue. After the first issue, maybe they would have gotten another artist for the second issue, but nope. That's weird. That did you write them uh, any letters or anything? Nope. I just passively hoped it. Oh, well, that's probably yeah. why they didn't do it. Yeah. Uh, had they heard from me, yeah. they would have been like, oh, we should change the artist. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the first issue was great. I'm looking forward to the second issue, uh, despite really not having a taste for uh, Salvador La Roca's artwork. Black Knight, Curse of the... <sighs> oh, smell I smell his stuff over here. He's got like a... Is there chocolate in that? No. It smells chocolatey. There is. You're... It's not. Um, I I'm surprised you can smell it. I've just opened up the yeah the mouth siziest of holes. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Black Knight: Curse of the Ebony Blade, number two by Cy Sperrier, who's one of my uh, two watch writers, because um, I liked his John Constantine yeah. series. He wrote a really good um, books of magic. It was ah. the first books of magic that I ever read, and it was about Tim Hunter as an adult. But I had no idea at the time that there was anything else. Yeah. Uh, Books of Magic, Life During Wartime, I believe. Is oh, it. that's cool. Yeah. Um, oh, would you mind setting an alien aside for me? Sure. Justin A. What's up, y'all? Oh, no. Uh, I think we have. With, with the map. All right, Justin, <laughs> there is an alien put aside for you. The issue of the comic or? No, he's just a xenomorph. I found yeah. one. And you put it aside for mm -hmm. Justin Agnes. Excellent. Uh, Blade Runner Origins number three comes out this week. I haven't read a single one of these Blade Runner comic books. Oh. Tim Wilkins has a subscription. Okay. Tim Wilkins subscription. Uh, and there's a variant cover Ooh. and a variant cover. Has anyone read any of these Blade Runner comics? Uh, sub question, should I? Oh, let's see, Black Knight, we already did that. Here we go. All right, Captain Marvel number 28, Sorceress Supreme question mark exclamation point. Look at that dope ass costume. That is cool. I like that a lot. I've been enjoying uh, Kelly Thompson's run on Captain Marvel. I think it's 28 issues and I think there were only two short um, series that are, you know, storylines within that that I was kind of like, that's eh, fine. But the rest of it's been great. A lot of great character work I like. So that comes out this week. All right. Next up, we have Champions number six by who is this? Danny Lohr and Luciano Vecchio. It's a pretty dynamic cover, despite the fact that everyone is standing still. That's real cool. I like that. Killer App Part One. Uh, you're welcome, Justin. Action figure expert. No, the question is, can alien acid blood melt adamantium? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. We'll ask Brian. We'll see what Brian has to say when he's done with a customer over here. Anything you're looking for, Tim? No, I'm just going to keep visiting in there. Yeah, stuff. Uh, the new one coming out, the new uh, X book coming out is called Way of X. Yes. 
All right, so that stack is donezo. Next up, we have Carnage, Black, White, and Blood, number two. And so the, this is a anthology series wherein each issue has a, a bunch of different Carnage stories from a bunch of different creators. And this has a Donny Cates story with Kyle Hotz artwork, a Chip Zdarsky story with Marco Cicchetto art, and a Ram V story with uh, Javier Fernandez's art. All very good teams. I didn't care about the first issue at all, but ooh, <laughs> I guess mild spoilers. What? Carnage, black, white, and blood. I'm curious about it. I might check this one out. I like Donnie Cates, so we'll see what he's got to say about his old buddy Carnage. Uh, Eternals number four, soon to be a major motion picture from Marvel uh, MCU by Kieran Gillen and Isad Rab Wow, oh, I was saying it wrong, and then I heard it in a rubbish. I always said Isad Ribic, but it's like Isad Ravish. Isad Ravish. The B has a V sound. So, yeah, um, this is a great series, too. It's fi finally an Eternals comic book that, I, that I'm enjoying. I hope someone steals that Captain Marvel Sorcerer Supreme because Marvel doesn't deserve to be loved for what they did to movies. By the way, the Snyder Cut is awesome. You say the, the most interesting stuff, Roboto. You always keep me on my toes. What Marvel did to movies. <sighs> Let's see. Firefly, brand new verse number two. This takes place in the future after the movie. And um, this is written by Josh Lee Gordon and illustrated by Fabiana Mascolo. I was a big Firefly fan. I love the, the TV show. I love the movie. and I, But I haven't had a chance to check out this new series. Brand new verse. And you'll notice that the four characters there are illustrated as leaves on the wind. And if you know your Firefly, you know what that means. Or at least what it references. All right. G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, One Shot, Serpentor Uncoiled. I used to love Serpentor. I thought he was such a fun character. And this is, oh, this is just, oh, this is awesome. This is just a reprint of Larry Hama's original um, Serpentor origin story. This is awesome. Who is it? Um, it's just a, a reprint of the 1980s Serpentor story. Oh. Uh, I remember that guy. I never watched it, but uh, I remember his look from the. What are you looking for? Uh, the gentleman for the Fortnite thing has arrived. The, you already passed him. I did. Oh, they're in the bag. You know, I he did. has for two copies. He did. There you go. I just completely ignored it because it was in a bag for some reason. Uh, all right. Next up, Godzilla Monster. I don't know what the... They, they covered it with his head. So I'm assuming it says Monsters and Protectors. I, I don't know. Let's see. Godzilla Monsters and Protectors. <laughs> What's the question? Batman Pop Final. Uh, death Metal. Uh, did you order one? No, no, no. He was just asking. <laughs> we have one. Uh, this should be. Let me take a look. Hold on. Sure. Um. Oh, he's okay. Okay, so this one, yes. Excellent. You got it. Uh, yeah, Godzilla Monsters and Protectors number one. Um, by Eric Burnham and art by Dan Shoning. Very sort of cartoony. Uh. Disney-esque kind of illustrations. Oh, what's up, Hal? How's it going? Um, 
boop, boop, boop. Netflix might make a Youngblood TV series, and you hope that happens. You don't like Marvel, but you like the Snyder Cut and also Rob Liefeld's Youngblood. Fair enough. Um, let's see. Hey, Kevin Brown, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. Jim Henson's The Storyteller Tricksters Tale 2 of 4. It's a four-issue miniseries. Jim Henson's Storyteller has been, uh, was originally a TV show back in the 80s, I believe. And um, they've been doing these nice little miniseries, which is very, very cute. Check that out. Jana and the Unpossible Monsters is a YA series by Chris Somney and Laura Somney with art by Chris Somney. Chris Somney is one of my favorite contemporary artists working. He is awesome. He did a really great run on, if you're looking for a good Black Widow series, he did a great run with Mark Wade, maybe about five, six years ago. Monstrous is still going strong with number 33 by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. I read the first trade paperback of this. Uh, it's a very dense read. It's very interesting. It's about as far as I got, and then I got distracted. What did they order? Great. Well, no. God damn it. I can't print black shirts, Brian. I'll call them later. The Many Deaths of Lila Starr by Ram V and Felipe Andrade, which I know Felipe Andrade. I've seen, what have they worked on before? I don't know, but this looks pretty interesting. There we go. Look at that cover. That is gorgeous. Uh, there's two covers. There's this cover, and then there's a cover by David Mack, which is a foil cover. Very shiny. Good Lord. There we go. <laughs> uh, Maria Lovett's Luna number three. Maria Lovett is the artist who did um, the Brian Azzarello sexy book. What was that called? Um, Faithless. Uh, and now she's writing and drawing her own series called Luna. James Stoko, uh, his creator-owned Orphan and the Five Beasts, number two, comes out this week. And if you watch the Netflix film, The Old Guard, um, there is a series for it. Um, there's a brand new six-issue mini. This would be the third volume of Old Guard. And this is called Tales Through Time by Greg Rucka. Yeah, like also you had taken an order from someone for the pillow fight. I didn't. Yeah. Um, but it's a black shirt. I can't print it. Those are, those are leftovers from when I was having them silk screened. All right. Ah, did I see the Shang-Chi trailer? I did. It is. It is good. I'm very excited for it. Um, I actually am trying to track down some old Shang-Chi comics to check out. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I never cared about Iron Man. Right, exactly. yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, well, Guardians of the Galaxy, obviously. Yeah. The I didn't see those. Do you have the earlier Jim Henson storyteller issues? Let me check Molly. Uh, I mean, I don't. I definitely don't. But um, I can order them in for you. 
and add it to your list. Jim Henson, storyteller, tricksters. One, two, three, Molly HW. Let's see if I can get those for you. Um, Kevin Brown says, yes, monstrous, very good, but couldn't keep up. Is that the um, Cthulhu one with the 20s? In the no. FBI? No? No. It's something completely different. Completely different. I didn't like that other one. Um, oh, can Justin have the Layla star foil? Uh, I have to check to see how much that costs, but yes, uh, I can, if not, I can get you the rain, the plain, um, Layla star. Lay Layla star foil or regular. Cover for Justin Ags. Got it. And boop, 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 boop. Have you guys heard of a movie called Phantom of the Paradise? Yes. Uh, I saw it at a 24 hour horror movie marathon and I could not wait for it to be over. Alex wants the third old guard chunk of stuff. Issues, I mean. We have the first two old guard trade paperbacks. All right. So I'll put that down under Molly. Old guard. Tales through time number one. Okay. All right, all caught up. Great. I didn't like Phantom of the Paradise. No, I didn't. Uh, Nomen Omen, number 14 by Marco B. Bucci and Jacopo Kamani. I am surprised that this series is still going. I thought it was going to be a mini series, um, but it turns out it. it's an, said number 14. Yeah, still yeah. going. Yeah. I mean, I could see that being like a 20 some issue story and still yeah. being a self, you know, a, a with an ending kind of thing. I mean, it looks dope. Uh, I, I enjoyed the first two issues that I read. Um, and then I fell behind, but yeah, this looks, this looks really good. Looks like there's Flip through that. Color now. Yeah. It was originally mostly yeah. black and white. Now it's only partially black and white. There were a lot of attempts made in the first two that I thought were noble and worthy attempts that yeah. fell a little short, but, uh, it's still, oh, this looks awesome. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's really this picked cool. up. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a cool, uh, little sword that she's got here. Yeah. I like I that. Love that. Yeah. yeah. Same Z's. Excellent. Uh, all right. What am I doing? What am I? What, again, I need more room. Hmm. Post Americana number five by Steve Scrooge and Dave Stewart. That's, that may be Scrooge. Actually. Scrooge. Yeah, by so. Steve Scrooge and Dave Stewarty. There you go. <laughs> Nailing it. <laughs> Power Ringers uh, number six. <laughs> um, written by Ryan Parrot. Perot, probably. P-A-R-R-O-T-T. -T. Oh, I don't know. Ooh. Oh, wait. There's a question. Yeah. Someone had asked a question in the chat. What was it? And they said, yeah. can aliens uh -huh. acid spit uh -huh. melt uh -huh. adamantium? No. Oh, he says no. <laughs> uh, but I never saw the alien movies. Well, uh, they have acid spit. What's that? They have acid spit. Oh, <laughs> see, I thought the issue was that they didn't have acid spit. Ah, so no, that's that's acid no, spit. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. They didn't have it. Yeah, it's weird that you would think that. Yeah, well, Since it's it's called acid spit. <laughs> I, mean, I thought you were pulling a fast one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say no, right? Like adamantium is far. Like he has survived many things. That so I think many are things. Far more corrosive than whatever the acid spit level mm. of acidity is, right? Yes, I would say the same. That the acid spit does not melt adamantium. It would yeah. it would melt Wolverine. Oh, definitely. But his bones would still be there. Here's the thing. What is it? There have been different stories where Wolverine is just decimated all to hell. Uh huh. And then comes back. He comes back from yeah. like an atom. He's right. come back from like an atom at one point. Like. But what about his adamantium? adamantium again. Yeah. Yeah. It's an excellent question, and I think they kind of did it. It's different, but in the Ultimate Universe, you remember his son? 
Yeah. Who like started off with bone claws and in like his first issue, he was like, I have the urge to do this thing. And it like covered in adamantium. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so that was why he had adamantium. And I thought that that was a part of his mutation. Yeah. Yeah. He had metal somehow influenced in a Lamarckian evolutionary sense by his father's experiments that were done on him. Yeah. Um, but I thought that that was a decent way to address that. But yeah. uh, it's like Optimus Prime's trailer. Where it just that? comes from nowhere. <laughs> right. Yeah, it always just scoots up. Us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they have acid. Oh, sorry, Justin. What do you say? They have acid blood. Yeah. They it's true. They blood? do. They do have acid blood. Their spit is just regular spit. It's he's he's one hundred percent correct. So, because uh, how, how you know there's an alien above you yeah. is they will they will very dramatically uh, just lower their spit onto you and you go blurp. What? Oh no! Screw with you? Are they sentient? The aliens? They are well. They're more like just beasts. Okay. Yeah. Like, like they're hunters. Oh, okay. But it's not like they chit chat. No. Well, would they? No. Okay. No. So I would like to point out that uh, my answer to the question was correct. Because Either way. They don't have acid spit. Oh, it's <laughs> <We> true. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> they do not have acid spit. Uh, Roboto says, I heard Post Americana was good. Uh, if you like Grant. Um, the what? guy who wrote it. If you like, if you like Steve Scrooge. Yeah. No, if you like Garth Ennis, uh, yeah. you'll like uh, Post Americana. My feeling was Undiscovered Country is, you know, it's one of those things where similar things come out around the same time. Yeah. I far prefer Undiscovered Country. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's definitely a, there's more thought. There is. For that one. And it's weirder. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it, there's a yeah. lot more thought in that one. Um, you are correct, Justin. I apologize. Uh, uh, aliens do have, the xenomorphs have acid blood. Hmm. Um, radiant <laughs> black <laughs> number <Spider-Man>. three. <laughs> it's radioactive blood. Ra- radioactive. <laughs> Listen, bud. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Radiant Evil, number three by Kyle Higgins. Is it Radiant Evil or... Radiant Motherfucker. <laughs> you mean Resident Evil? Did I say Radiant Evil? Ra- Radiant Black. Yeah. Listen, I am tired. Sure. I am exhausted did, all the you, time. Uh, last night you did a Resident Evil movie marathon. That's right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my son is wonderful, but he does not let me sleep. Mm. Rain Like Hammers, uh, oh. number four, Pomp and Circumstance. He's saying it. Is pomp it and Circumstance. Is or the word and? Pomp. Yeah. And, cir- and circumstance. circumstance. Also okay. this. Cool. All right. Oh, here's the upside down cover that we is that we Oh! Yes. Well, but see, it's now not upside down. it's not upside down. No, but it was in the ads. It was in the ads, yes. That's disappointing. Uh, Spider Woman number eleven, classic costume, new villains, Wait, great already... jumping on point. What? Oh, she's already out of her. Uh, yeah. I don't want to look like Spider Woman, but I'll do this variation on my Spider Woman costume. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. I like this costume better. Carla Pacheco and Pere Perez. This is a good looking book. Cool. Action packed. Yeah, this looks great. Yeah. I really want to catch up on this. God dang it. Ooh. What is it? Her sp- you know how Spidey's got the, the I always he doesn't always. No, he does not. But he's the best when he has yeah, he's the uh, webs under his armpits. Arm. Yeah. Spidey Woman has those armpit jams. Cool. But they slice and dice. Ooh, that's cool. Look at that. She's slicing that dude up. And dicing him? Also, but I, the dice is to come. It's like the next panel. Yeah. It's next up. The next guy yeah. gets the dice. Yeah. So you you are firmly in the underarm Spider-Man webbing. Oh yeah. yeah. Who isn't? Uh, an know. idiot. An idiot is not. That's who is. That's fine. That's fine. Let's find us a dummy. Um, I does he ever? I guess that was just Miguel O'Hara who would kind of glide on his webbing. Yes. Yeah. Which is funny. Yeah. Because <laughs> his. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I felt like his underarm webbing just billowed in the it was wind. Like a it was of tattered. Webbing. Yeah, Shinube shattered. Um, I don't get that reference. Oh, that's a reference to the Rolling Stones, Shinube oh. shattered. Okay, cool. And sex and sex and sex and sex and sex yeah. and sex and sex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but sorry. Yeah, it is in the future, right? Maybe yeah. it's tatters, but it has some sort of futurey capability. Sure. Then, yeah. And also, how does he stick in the concrete with those little claws? Right. Like, they're just claws. They're just claws. Right. They're just 
claws. Listen, they're just claws. Uh, let's see. Uh, Radiant Black is awesome. That's true, says Roboto. Image comic series next to Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. Surprisingly good Geiger. I enjoyed Geiger number one as well. Yeah, me too. Chris Dunn. Hey, Chris Dunn. Huh. Joining us for the live stream for the first time, I think. Spidey needs the armpit webs. That's it. He needs That's them. it. Yeah. Uh, Spider Woman also Julian's your potatoes. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> it sounds. <laughs> it makes me want to protect my potato my potatoes. <laughs> sounds like a threat. Can. Yeah. Um, okay, so Amazing Spidey Man number sixty four, mm -hmm. Legacy issue number eight hundred and sixty five, mm -hmm. King's Ransom by Nick Spencer and Federico Vincentini. And uh, this is part two of the King's Ransom series starring Randy Robertson. Randy Robertson. Uh, and the new, what is she? She's a, is what is Robbie, she? Robbie Robertson's son? Yes. Yes, excellent. Who's and, apparently also the name of a musician. Oh. Like a fairly well-known musician. I didn't know that. Yeah. In the band, I believe, with uh, Max Weinberg and the much more famous guy who associates himself with the band <laughs> called The Band. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Whoever that is. I'm trying to remember his girlfriend's his name. Maybe? She's yeah. a oh yeah, the he's well, that's the East Street band, right? No. Well maybe he's in that. I don't know. I don't know for music. And uh anyway, yeah. Robbie Robertson is having a an illicit affair oh. with Tombstone's daughter. What's illicit she's about? the new she's the new Beatle. Wait, why is it illicit? It's I mean, are they is one of the married or something? Are they well the, it's like uh Star Cross levels. Oh, like a Romeo and Juliet. It's Romeo and Juliet West side story. Yeah. Tristan uh, and Isolde. Um, All iterations of the same story. What am I saying? Um, yeah, because Robbie is his son. He's the son of a good guy. Son of a good guy. And she's the son of a bad guy. Right. Yeah. And ne never the two shall mix. No, I beg to differ. Oh, they mix. They mix. So anyway. Is he, is he a powered character at this point? or does he just Tombstone? Like... No, 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 no. Robbie? Uh, no, he's, he's a regular dude. The son. Is yes, also regular. regular dude. All right. But she is taking on the moniker of Beetle. Yes. Cool. Yeah, Randy. Randy. I keep saying Robbie. It's Randy. That's his dad. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, there's a variant cover by Carlos Pacheco, which I, I miss him. Uh, he's great. He's there. He's right there. Uh, but like he doesn't do interiors. I haven't uh, seen yeah. him do interiors. And it's um, uh, what's his nuts? It's um, oh shit! I almost called him Sentry, but he's not. Hyperion. Hyperion. In the Hulk. Oh. Um, just like helping the Hulk out with his lower back issues. That's nice. But yeah, right? Yeah. Look, he's like, he kind of looks happy, the Hulk. He's like, oh, I'm so yeah. relaxed. Hulk sore. Uh. Um, that has nothing to do with the issue, right? No. That cover is cool, though. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. because of Heroes. Re it's a Heroes Reborn variant. Oh, I So see. the new series or the new crossover initiative. event, the new initiative mm. from Marvel is going to be Heroes Reborn, mm. which is basically the nail. Right. Um, except... Instead of no Superman, there's no Avengers, right? Oh, is that? But uh, all of the individual Avengers are gone. It's not just that they didn't form into a team. I don't know yet. All right. All right. Read to find out. Yeah. Or else. Yeah. Or else don't. Yeah, one of those things will happen to you. <laughs> By you. <laughs> and for you. Uh, Stray Dogs, number three. Uh, number three. It's like a um, uh, D Disney but meets murder mystery. Oh. Yeah. Like that Muppet movie. That, you remember it wasn't Muppet, but it was like the Happy Time Murders or something. Oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't see it, but it was an intriguing idea. I thought, it was gonna, I thought you were going to talk about Meet the Feebles. I don't know that. Oh, uh, it was a... Don't, don't worry about it. Okay. Um, what about that one with Seth Green that he was in that lasted a few episodes? I think Eugene Levy might Oh, right. Too. right. I, like, I love Seth Green. Right. There was like a... There was like a puppet dog or something, right? Yeah, something like that. And like yeah. he lived in a like an adult world yeah. that was inhabited by Muppets. Yeah. And uh, I remember liking that show. And mm -hmm. then two episodes later, it, was, it wasn't on anymore. It wasn't. It was gone. Yeah. Um, Hal is also Team Armpit Webs. Cool. Kevin Brown says, "Did they ever in story explain the pit webs? It always bothered me that they just disappeared. Maybe he kept getting wrapped up in them." I think it's like a Todd McFarlane draws webs one way. Yeah, it's definitely, kind of it's just an artist's yeah. thing. Size of the uh, eyes kind of thing. I really enjoy this Conan and Andy back and forth. Oh, thank you. Ah, nice. Yeah. Am I, an I'm the Andy. Yeah, from the, from the, the show. Hyperion age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other barbarian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Andy the Lesser Barbarian. Andy the Lesser Barbarian. 
Uh, Molly <laughs> well, says, red hair? Like it is, I, well, well you, I had, red hair. I had red hair. You have had red hair. And now I've got whatever the hell this is. More like Andy, really. Yeah. So is mine. Uh, <laughs> it is a threat to Julian to slice food into thin strips about the size of matchsticks. Yes, it is a threat. Uh, Hyperion got great lumbar support. <laughs> Uh, says Brian, who is more powerful? Asks action figure expert, Sentry or Hyperion? Ooh, probably Hyperion. Why? I'll tell you why. Great. Now, here's the thing. This may not really be a, an answer, the correct answer to the question. Hyperion doesn't have a massive drawback that makes him constantly not be of uh, use <laughs> or is his that's not? true um what what is the constant drawback that the sentry has so the people know uh so the sentry um turned out to be sort of either one half of or uh the the yin to the yang of the void and whenever the sentry appears so appears the void and so uh, like a long time ago he had to make himself and the world forget that he ever existed which also had a negative effect on the Hulk, who was like calmed by the Sentry's presence. Oh, that's and right. Was like way better off. Yeah, you know. And um, and then so apart from him just not having in story much impact because you always kind of get sidelined, like Len was talking about in King yeah. of Black. Yeah, he did. Just in like immediately. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> and he is also a, a guy of light who is yeah who is crucial to stopping the King of Black. Yeah. Um. So he's got that always hanging over his head where the void is always like hot on his heels. Yeah. Um, now, yeah. The century is, uh, the century seems to be the void, right? It's like a DID situation, right? Is he is, he's his own bad guy. So I think that they have done some retconning. Yeah. Even, even when it didn't count as retconning, like in the original story, there was mm -hmm. one of those like Silver Age version, modern age. Oh, is I happening see. In the so, but then they later did some where it's like the regular guy who was empowered by this thing maybe always had that within it, kind of a Hulk deal. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he might be, and that might be a little bit depend on the writer. Yeah. But even without that, even if it was just Sentry and the Void is for a while uh, otherwise occupied, I think it's one of those like, uh, well, who do you like more? Yeah. You know, it's like who would win, Superman or Silver yeah. Surfer? Actually, who do you prefer? You know, I've seen a bunch of debates on TikTok recently where people are saying who would win this and that and blah, 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 and, and, and being very yeah, yeah. aggressive about it. Yeah, and like, yeah. um, well, that's that's impossible. That would never. And Stan Lee literally said, mm -hmm. we could, he's, he's asked this question a lot. Who would win this character or this character? And he goes, I'll tell you, it's whoever writes it. Yeah. Whoever writes whoever it I picks the like winner. Winning. Yeah, whoever yeah. I want to win yeah. is going to win. That's how it's yeah. decided. Now, I think those debates make sense when it's something like, well, Thor or Superman? Superman is vulnerable to magic. Yeah. But Thor summons lightning magically. Mm. Is that actual? Is it? It's not magical lightning. He's right. the god of thunder. Yeah. That's just regular lightning. Right. So that's a fun and interesting debate. Mm. But if you're just like, which one is stronger? It's yeah. Like they don't even have regular power levels. Yeah. In their own comics. Right. It's not so, consistent. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. My answer to anybody who says, Superman versus anybody, almost anybody. Mm -hmm. If Superman has no morality, like if we're just talking about who would win, sure, he just tosses everyone into the sun. Yeah, and then he flies in with them, takes a little sun bath. Yeah, and comes out even stronger. He's like, ah, this is yeah. great. <laughs> so I had customers in here who they, they were having a debate and they wanted me to weigh in because <laughs> one of them was a Superman fan, one of sure. them was a Batman fan. Sure. Um, and I understand being a Batman fan, but even as a Batman fan, you must understand. Right. Superman would toss him into the goddamn sun. He's he is Superman. He, yeah. Batman is wealthy and smart. Yeah. Dude. His superpower is he's rich, as the movie tells and us. Even that is just recent. Like there was a uh, there's a great um, comic book legends revealed or comic book questions answered by a guy named Brian Cronin on mm -hmm. comic book resources, and I love it. He does a lot of this kind of thing, and he was talking about how you know like when did that version of Batman appear? And you can go back not that long ago, like pre Grant Morrison's run. And there's an issue where he's alone in the watchtower with Despero and he survives, but everyone is like, wow, I, you survived. You don't even have any powers. Like that's pretty impressive, but not like, yes, of course he, yeah. <laughs> he survived, you know? So the whole like Batman is pre-prepared thing is just 
a version of Batman. You know, yeah. it's just like a modern storytelling style of Batman. And it's not one that I particularly like very much. No, it can be cool when they do it well. Yeah. And it's more like a, here is how unexpectedly Batman was prepared and he won. Mm -hmm. Not like, if Batman has enough time to prepare, he could beat literally anyone. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's yeah. nonsense. Because Superman's pretty capable, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's not an idiot. Right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Greg the Bunny says Chris Dunn. There it yes. is. Fantastic. And well was done. Eugene Levy in it? And is it was Levy Eugene Levy? 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 I think it's Levy. Levi? Probably Levi. Yeah. Of the Levites. Of the <laughs> no, that is actually I know. definitely where he got his name. Well, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. But it uh, is funny. <laughs> uh, I hate DC Future State, but I love the character Gold Beetle. I wish she was part of a better series. Well, she is now. Well, it's funny you say She's that. part of Flash. Yeah. She just showed up in this issue. And I'll tell you, Lynn, when we read that, Lynn was like, I hope we show up. And I was like, Lynn, I hate to break it to you. I don't think she's going to. Ah, I'm happy to be wrong on that one. I hate to break it to you. Yeah. You were wrong. Well, I mean, I said I was happy. No, I hate to break it, but I hate to break it to you anyway. Oh, well, that's weird. I but... hate to be I hate to be the bearer of good news for you. <laughs> Yeah, you are kind yeah. of hateful towards me. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> He's the worst. <laughs> oh, JT, you're hateful. <laughs> um, you, um, <laughs> oh, you are pretty hateful towards me. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. Um, Justin, oh, Mars. Hi, Mars Comics. Hey. You're joining us late, but wel welcome better late than never. We've been for a while. So you uh, yeah, we've been vamping just until you can yeah. get here. Now we can start the show. Star Wars, Dr. Aphra, <laughs> number nine comes out this week. Uh, there was an omnibus. Listen, here's what happened. Here, I'm going to tell you the, the down low. A peek behind the sausage, as they say. Oh, I love it when you say that. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the Star Wars, Dr. Aphra, omnibus. I'm sorry. <clears throat> The Star Wars Dr. Aphra Omnibus came out this week. Uh, and by this week, I mean two weeks ago. And um, I had ordered two copies in because I knew my buddy Cody wanted one. And I knew my buddy Jadles wanted one. And so I had a copy here for him. I had a copy for me. And I was like, mm, mm, I'm going to read this. It's going to be great. And then another customer who had also pre-ordered the book and I completely forgot was like, hey, did my Dr. Afro show up? And I said, oh, it sure did. You bet your bottom dollar it's here for you. Uh, and now it's out of print, so I can't get one. Good times. Um, let's see. It was part of Spider-Man's cosmic suit, says Justin. What was? I've lost the thread. What was part of Spider-Man's cosmic suit? Cosmic oh, I mean the armpit webs. What? 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 Uh, oh, did he have it when he was Captain Universe? Did he? It's possible. I don't remember it that way, but I don't distinctly remember it not. I don't remember that way at all, but you might be right. Although um, he had a special control of his webs. He did, so that's he true. Could have gone back and forth. Mental illness, says Brian, <laughs> Brian Anderson. What? Oh, he's back, he's what? back on this entry. Oh. But like literally the, the comment is just mental illness. Uh, um, oh I don't kind of tell if he was just like hmm. <laughs> letting me know. Uh, I always uh -huh. thought his mental health created the void. Same here, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Action Finger Expert. Also speaking of Hyperion, besides him and Nighthawk, what other squad are on Supreme Court characters that have come to the... Squadron Supreme. Squadron Supreme characters. Squadron Supreme Court would be an interesting... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start, I envision it as a daytime TV show. I was thinking a nighttime TV show. Oh, it's nighttime. it's it's um the Squadron Supreme plus Night Court. Oh, I like that. Starring I Harry like Anderson. Oh, they're doing a new Night Court, I think. Are they? With the daughter of Harry Anderson. That's cute. Yeah. He, did he pass? He did. I remember, I I really liked him in Me that show. Too. I used He's to love player. Night Court. And on Cheers. He I'm trying to, think of the, the, trying to think of the the theme song for Night Court. Down, down, down. Bow, bow. Bow. Bow, 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 bow. I have it on my phone right now. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. But I don't think I think oh. they didn't do the bot bombs that you would have wanted them. Oh know? yeah, There's, um, I love that theme song. That was a great. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Also played Dave Barry. He's <clears> a personal favorite of mine. A personal favorite humor columnist. Oh. I think I learned a lot of humor from him as a youth. Huh. Um. He's great. I don't know if he holds up, but then he, they did a, a very short-lived TV show, which was good, but it didn't really capture hmm. the magic of his of his columns. So I don't understand. Um, what, Harry what Anderson it? was the main character. 
Oh, of a different show. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Dave's World. Da oh, Dave's Remember? World. And they, the theme song to that was Billy Joel's uh, You May Be Right, I May Be Crazy. I may be, be crazy, crazy. Hey, but it just may be a lunatic you're looking for. Turn out the lights! <laughs> um, let's see. Superman beats Batman easily, all caps. Yes. Like, I don't understand how that's even a debate. Yeah. Yes, Night Court was the bomb. Yeah. Some great writing. JD Livecasts, come for the comics, stay for the Night Court theme. Stay. <laughs> Never leave me. There was some weird stuff with the... Uh... They were like, we're gonna do a season ten, so they didn't wrap up whatever happened. So maybe they'll, maybe oh, they'll come like, back and that yeah. And if it happens, if the new one happens. Sword number five by uh, Al Ewing uh, and Valerio Shitty. Oh, good goodness gracious! Six see. alive. That is the first page. Oh, that looks like something that at one time I would have felt compelled to read, and will now just go to page two. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's better. <laughs> is it pictures? Actual pictures, yes. You know, I'll tell you, prose is great, but when I pick up a comic, that is what I am looking for. I don't pictures. want a lot of text. Text, yeah. You know what I mean? Same. It's like that's the mindset that I'm in. TMNT Turtles. Well, no. What? <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja TMN Turtles. Turtles. <laughs> yeah. TMN Turtles <laughs> by Kevin Eastman and um, Josie Campbell. No. Yes. Yes. Sophie. Sophie Campbell. A lot of the same letters. Yeah, they're very. I was very close. Yeah, Ultraman: The Trials of Ultraman, ah. by Kyle Higgins and Matt Groom, with art by Francesco Mana. There we go. He big, he big boy. Mm. Uh, next up, Usagi Yojimbo by Stan Sakai, number nineteen, The Master of Abishima. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Usagi Yojimbo, they are anthropomorphic animals, but they are very serious samurai tales. Um, there is, there's nothing about them being anthropomorphic in here. It's not adorable. There are beheadings and all sorts of things that you would expect in a samurai tale. Um, and Stan Sakai has been doing it for literally decades. Yeah. He is wonderful. Any sort of regularity to that? Or like, were there like years where there was no Usagi Yojimbo? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if there if it was on hiatus for a while or what. But this is a new series. I wonder why, so, why the anthropomorphization? Like maybe he just wanted to draw rabbits. Maybe to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe it was just like you know what I want to tell samurai tales, but I want to make it look a little different. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I meant to ask what other Squadron Supreme character. Oh, we never answered oh, yeah, this question. Yeah, <laughs> we went out. We went on a whole bit. <laughs> that was fun, and, though. and forgot <laughs> the answer to the question. I meant to ask. What other Squadron Supreme characters came to the 616? Uh, Power Princess, I believe. Oh. I think I've seen her around, but not in anything I was reading. Um, I don't think I've ever seen the Power Princess. That's her name, right? It's the a purple, terrible name. Purple clad one. Princess of Power or something. I don't know. I don't know. She's uh, Wonder Woman. She's the Wonder Woman. Yeah. Um, Power Princess. I think Awful. that's her name. She was definitely around. Like, she dated Hercules for a while. Wow. Um... Who didn't? Am I right? Ah, uh, Herc. Herc. Oh, Herc. Uh, he is very old. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I've never paid much attention to the Squadron Supreme. I liked Supreme Power by J. Michael, Michael Straczynski and um, other guy, Gary Frank. Oh, I like that series. I didn't know he was in both of them. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Ultra Mega Number Two by James Harron. If, uh, if you haven't read Ultra Mega number one, I highly recommend you do so. Um, and then read this one because it's big and crazy and fun. And the art is fantastic and disgusting. Uh, although not you, Roboto. If you don't like um, the uh, disgustingness of the... Uh, nope. Uh, Earlier on this podcast. Oh, uh, Pax Americana. Nope. No. The uh, movie. A movie. That would be I have part two. Yes, you do. Uh, something about a centipede. Yes, right? human centipede. Human centipede. It's, this is a very gross it's a book. Anthropomorphization. <laughs> it's a horrible movie. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, also, JD, in case this is relevant to the question about the Squadron Supreme, that is a big part of the Heroes Reborn thing. Like, there is a... It's very Squadron Supreme-centric. Yeah, like, there's a Doctor Spectrum. Like, I think a Marvel character that you know is Doctor Spectrum. Who? You, you Personally, know. like a buddy of mine? Well, I don't know if they're buddies, but... Acquaintance. I mean, you're very hateful towards them. <laughs> so he's a buddy. He's a buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very hateful toward my buddies. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
like that toy that you had when you were a kid. My buddy. Yeah. My, my buddy. buddy yeah. Wherever yeah. I go, him. he goes. It just annoyed you. That, oh, that I hated went. him. He went. Why can't, why, can't, why can't I go by myself? <laughs> uh, the Mighty Valkyries. Uh, I actually read this. I was going to do a thunder round on it. Thunder round. Thank you. Uh, there you are yourself now. Thunder your... round. No, I still can't do it. Thunder round. Uh, the Mighty Valkyries by Jane. Oh, there's a Jane story and a new Valkyrie story. Uh, the and Jane story is by Jason Aaron and Torin Grabek, Gronbeck, with art by Mattia De I U L I S. Ulis. 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 Holy cats, you guys! Um, just bear. I I got to show you some of this artwork. It's. Look, look at the, it's crazy. Brian, take, Let me see that. take that and look at it. I'm going to take it. Look at this artwork. I wish you could see it better, but holy cats. This is some of the best comic book artwork Ooh. I have seen in a very long time. This is awesome. It is just, it's stunning. Yeah. The, the facial expressions are on point. Um, there's one that I thought was sort of weird, right? She's, she's talking to this guy. He's hitting on her at the bar and she's making this strange face. But it, after a second of looking at it, I realized she's doing like tongue, like she's got her tongue sort of like, mm, kind of like annoyed. Like, uh, okay, buddy. It's very cool. The art in this is just something it's else. Amazing. This art is awesome. I, I can't get past it. Hmm. How will you get to the second page? <laughs> well, there's more on the next page. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, it's just highly recommended. Uh, the Mighty Valkyries. And the story is really interesting, too. Oh, and then there's a cover by Scotty Young. Um, Kevin Brown says, The Mark Grunwald Squadron wasn't bad. If you read it as proto Watchmen, did you ever read that stuff? I did read it. Yeah. Uh, so we have a visitor to the Johnny Destructo Worldwide Headquarters. <laughs> Come here. Look at this, you guys. This is my friend Kelly, but more importantly, <laughs> this is Jack Jack. Oh, hi. Look, he's in a bag. Hi, Jack Jack. <laughs> hi, Jack Jack. Do you remember me from yesterday? Oh, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Yeah. Hi, honey. Oh, <laughs> back in the bag. Jack Jack in a sack. He's in his Jack Jack sack. Jack -Jack sack. Like Isn't that. he cute? Uh, oh, Molly, Molly says, dog. <laughs> so cute. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Are you kidding? <laughs> Hi, Kelly. You're, <laughs> Kelly's here, too. Yeah. Maybe if you were in a bag, too, Kelly. In a puppy. Or at least half in a bag. Oh, look <laughs> at this. Oh, my God. I love you so much. He's very shy, in case you can't tell. He's very young. Oh, he's uh, eight weeks old. Yeah. He is one week behind my baby. And he'll never catch up. He'll never. <laughs> never. <laughs> um, Mars Comic says, smiley face. Uh, Walking Dead Deluxe number 13. Ooh, look at this cover by Tedesco. That's real nice. Uh, and there's a variant cover by David Finch. We went down two viewers. How did we go down two viewers? Just because of the puppy? What are you, evil? Way of X number one uh, by Cy Sperrier comes out this week. A night nightcrawler centric storyline and basically it's nightcrawler trying to deal with religion and how how his beliefs his christianity works now that he is on krakoa where death doesn't mean anything um so yeah there's a variant cover and another variant cover by scotty young very cute Oh. 
Let's see, way of X. And we got one more stack and then we're done. Women of Marvel number one with a cover by Sarah Pichelli. Um, and another cover. Let's see, a bunch of variants. Um, there's one by Amanda Connor, one by Peach Momoko, and one by Maria Wolf. So this is a showcase of all the, not all of them, but some of the badass female characters in Marvel. Uh, here's a Scarlet Witch Peach Momoko cover, which is really nice. That is gorgeous. Uh, and then a Amanda Connor. And the women are all in a pet store. They've broken, they've broken into a pet store for some reason. Um, so, yeah, that's real cool. And then, last but not least, X-Force number 19. It's a really cool cover. So, yeah, there we go. That's it. We did it, you guys. Oh, that's it? That's it. What was the last one? Uh, X-Force. Oh, all right. And Women of Marvel, number one. So, yeah, my son, my wife has to come into work. So uh, that means I have to take the reins on, on, on my son. Yeah. The son reins. You put reins on him? Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah. Otherwise, he'll escape. Or you can control his direction. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Tonight is uh, Movie Club. We're going to be talking about Dirty Dancing 2, Havana Nights, for some reason. Why is that? <laughs> I, because we thought it would be funny. Oh, I see. It's, it's been a running joke uh -huh. in Movie Club uh -huh. this entire year. Uh -huh. And so we were like, let's just let's just watch it. Okay. So I did. Yeah. Uh, and Molly, to which Molly says, yes. <laughs> it's on, it honestly started as a joke. What's that? She said that earlier. Molly won't be there today. <laughs> No, Molly will be there. Oh, who was it that's not going to be there? No. Oh, that's no. Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, all right, guys. Uh, and also, yeah, this Sunday at 10.30 a.m., we're going to be doing the Cult Pop Spoiler Alert live stream where we review this week's comic books. Kitty, am I on that show? Brian's on that hey. show. Hey. Hey. Bum, bum, bum. hey. Uh, that's it. I'm going to go take care of my son. Love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. And we will talk at you later. Say bye, Brian. Bye. Brian.